Hello friends, welcome back. Um, we just got an attack down at our outpost and it looks like they took out the radar at least. And maybe something else too, I hope not. Um, what happened is I saw a base here and I was, as I was getting ready to start the episode. I picked up my remote and fired upon it, and uh, it looks like the few turrets that I had there were not quite enough to take care of things, so. All right, well, not too much harm done. I'm glad my turret didn't get too damaged. Although, it didn't seem... Well, I guess this laser turret was was out of commission. So we should probably put... We should probably put another turret over here. Let's put one right there as well. Hopefully that'll, that'll help. Okay. Um, but it was just that one so far. <clears throat> it was a small one. There was only two or three biter nests. But uh, I guess that was still a little too much to handle. All right, um, so our research has gone to level 19 of mining productivity, which is great. Um, let's see how many science packs we've got right now. All right, yeah, it looks like we recently got another delivery of science packs. Um, Actually, I, th I think it was down here waiting for me because as soon as I, because productivity 18 was just barely not finished. And then as soon as I left the station, it finished. So, um, and then you probably noticed that um, it started the next level automatically. Uh, I did install that mod called auto research. Um, I'm just hitting the tilde key to see the previous messages. Um, so we can see that it once 18 was finished, it started 19 automatically. The way this thing works is if you hit Shift T, it brings up this dialog. And I've set it to only research what I have in the queue. And I have queued mining productivity. So the infinite research, it'll just go from one level to the next on whatever's queued. Um, now I have other research that is eligible to be done. Right, I have some of the grenade damage, flamethrower, rocket damage and stuff. Um, if you take off this only research queued items, it'll just research whatever it can do on the list. Um, but I don't wanna waste resources on rocket damage and stuff, at least not right now, because I don't really need it. So, so I put mining productivity in the queue and then I told it to only research queue. So it'll just keep going to the next level of mining productivity automatically without us having to do anything, which is pretty nice. Okay. Um, yeah, so I don't see any more biters down here. Um, doesn't seem like there's any more threats coming. Um, we keep getting attacks over at iron one. So let's go over there and add a few more, a few more turrets. Um, and I'm guessing that there are some bases down here that are, that are affected by the pollution and that's where the attacks are coming from. But I don't see anything yet, so. Hopefully the radar that we have over here will start to uncover stuff there and we'll be able to see where those threats are coming from and eliminate those. Um, now the other thing we could consider doing, uh, especially here, uh, which is the place where we're getting consistent attacks, is we could consider putting up a wall and that would help as well. Um, but I don't have walls with me, so I think for now we'll just we'll just double up on our defenses here. Uh, we still might take a little bit of damage, but um, at least with with that there, it'll 
will take a lot less damage than we were previously. Okay, um, so what we have to do now, uh, now that we've got our we've got our mining or our smelting module set up, we need to figure out where we want the smelting areas to be. Um, <clears throat> and I'm thinking that we could perhaps start setting them up to the south side of our main line here. Um, but at the same time, I want to avoid having I want to avoid having too many intersections, uh, or at least not having them too close together on the main line. Um, looks like we just revealed another base there. Um, then again, you know, the, the rocket bases are not going to be requiring a lot of smelted material, so... You know, there wouldn't be a lot of going back and forth across if we put them over here. Um, but maybe over here would be a better place. Because there's not much else that I'm going to need to put in this area. I don't have any resource patches there. I'm not going to use this coal because it's too small. Um, and this, this outpost is going to be gone soon. Got coal and stone there. We might want to use those at some point. Yeah, so maybe maybe down here would be a good place to put smelting. And it's pretty close to our to our first iron patch. Yeah, so I think we could uh, we could come down and start setting up our smelting over here. I think that'll be a good idea. And we'll start with iron, like I mentioned. Um, <clears throat> now if I go to my Factorio calculator, uh, let me get to my desktop here if I can, there we go, Factorio calculator, okay, so for iron plate, the calculator tells me that we're going to need 550 electric furnaces making iron. Um, now a lot of that is going to be used for steel and and the steel for steel I'm going to do iron smelting along with the steel. I'm not going to bring iron plates to steel. I'm going to bring iron ore to steel. So steel is going to have 301 furnaces. Um, so if I take away 301 furnaces from the iron plate, that leaves me with, well, f uh, about 220, but I have to take, I have to take productivity into account too. So let me, I'm actually going to open a new factorial calculator here. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, I can't really see. Well, iron plate, yeah. Iron plate takes five, or steel plate takes five iron plates. Okay, so uh, I'm going to need to make 11,638 steel plates a minute. So if I take 11,638 uh, divided by five, so that's 2,327 iron plates per minute for steel. Is that right? No, I need to multiply by five. Okay, so I need 50, 58,190 iron plates per minute to make steel with. The calculator tells me that I need 106,000 iron plates total. So if I subtract that from 106 for 19, then that means I need 48,000 iron plates per minute for stuff other than steel. Okay, so let's divide that by the total, 106,419. All right, so that means 45% of the iron plates are not going to be used for steel. 45%. 
Okay, so if I take the 550 furnaces that it says I need, I take 45% of that. All right, so we need 248 furnaces just making iron plates. So let me write that down, 248. Okay, and in our blueprint, we have 60 on each of these modules. So that means I'm gonna need four modules. Four modules would be, give me 240. I already have a 10% safety factor in everything, so I think that'll be fine. So we're gonna need four, four of these units um, making iron. So let's go and start getting that set up. And we are going to do that, yeah, right over here. So we'll go up here, we'll turn left, and uh, we're just gonna get, at least get clear of this iron patch. And then we'll start working our way south. All right, iron patch ends right here, more or less. So I think we can, we can break out here. All right, so let's uh, clear the signals that we have from those two sections. And then we get my rail book. And put in our T-junction. getting attacks up here at our main base too. Uh, we do have a couple revealed over here, so let's take those out. Using the turret that we left over there. All right, good. And as we see them pop up, we'll continue to get rid of them. Let's check how much ammo we have there. We still have 10 shells left, so that should last us for a little while. Okay, so let me get off the main line here. So we're out of the way. Okay, I'm gonna remove these lights because my lights don't line up properly. All right, and I'm just gonna put one more segment of straight rail here just to get things started. I don't want to come too far off the main line before I start putting things together. Now, <clears throat> managing our incoming trains is going to be a little bit tricky, sort of like it might end up being something like we did over here. For now, I'm just going to copy this. So one, two, three, four, f that's got six lanes on that stacker. Um, is that going to be enough for us? I'm going to have four modules. So I'd like to be able to have at least four trains waiting. Eight. Let's go with 12 lanes on our incoming stacker. All right, I can let's delete that one. Put that one back where it belongs. All right, so I'm gonna copy this stacker uh, just to get started with. Okay, so this is our incoming lane. So let's just go two sections and we'll go into the stacker from right here. Get rid of those trees. Um, and then in this case, it's going to be Flipped. Yeah, I think we're going to have to change the design a bit. Yeah, okay, I guess that's the right spot. All right, so it'll go into a stacker like that. For 
that into a stacker into the stacker. Okay, and we're going to have 12 lanes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we're going to want to double this, essentially. So let's lay down another one. All right, so this way I'll have, I'll be able to have at least one train waiting for each station. We're going to have a total of eight stations, four in and four out. And then we'll have another 50% just in case we need some extra. There we go. All right, and then we need to get rid of that section of track. Uh, let's use grenades. Poison capsules are also good for taking out trees. And I, I think they actually affect a wider area. Range 25, area of effect size is 11. Yeah, it's got twice the range. Um, but it's not instant like grenades are. However, that increased range is pretty nice, and I, th I think I might switch over to poison capsules as my, as my favorite method. Alright, and we can use the bots to get rid of the other ones. Okay, and then from here, we go back there. One, two, that's lined up. Yep, that's right. Okay, this is going to be our exit. Um, actually, I think I want to maintain. I want to maintain our signal spacing here on the way out. Um, and in fact, let's duplicate our power pole structure, and then we'll go down a few more lanes. I'm not sure how far we need to go, but. We'll get that set up, and then we'll copy that as well, so we can carry on this lane of track. Okay, so far so good. Uh, looks like I'm missing a couple signals here. Let's get that fixed. Okay, so now uh, we can start to set up our first module, or at least lay down the blueprints for it. There's a couple biters. All right. So it looks like the first one can be as close as this. Oh, it's, it's going to need to go the other way, though. Yeah, I think this is, that's about as close as we can make it. Or maybe we can even make it over that far. Let's, let's see if, put it as close as it'll go and then see if we can make it fit with the rails. Like right there would be the absolute closest. All right, so. I just want to stand where I need to put the rail. Okay, yeah, so we would need rail to come in right there. And right there. So let's just make sure that we can make that fit. Okay, yeah, see the, the curvature of that first rail coming in would interfere with one of the beacons. So if we move it over just one more, then we should be in good shape. So let's go ahead and lay it down there. And then my bots are gonna try to 
lay down whatever they can. Um, I think what I'm going to have to do is set up a train that's just full of furnaces and beacons and modules and chests and inserters and so forth. Okay, um, I need a signal there. Okay. So that looks pretty good. I can hear my son and his friend <laughs> laughing their butts off in the other room. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but I had to end the last episode kind of abruptly because as I was recording it, uh, my son came in with a big bump on his forehead. <clears throat> so I went and got that taken care of, gave him a nice pack. Um, but it doesn't seem that it's bothering him at all anymore. So that's good. <laughs> okay, so that's going to be unit one. Um, now unit two, if we can call it that, uh, we're going to basically set up the same way. But in this case... I want to make sure that we are at least far enough away that our robot networks don't interfere. Oh man, and it looks like these, it looks like the beacons up here at the top are not tileable, which is kind of a bummer. Right, so the the top, oh yeah, see the top and the bottom don't match. Or do they? It looks like my beacons are all shifted by one. Yeah, they are shifted by one between the top and the bottom. So I think if we can, if we can fix that, then I'll be able to tile this row of beacons between the different segments, and that will be awesome. Oh, crap. You know what? I got a problem here. This last row of chests is out of range of my roboports. And just barely. By one tile. <clears throat> that is a problem. So that means I'm either going to need to put another roboport somewhere. Or like two roboports. I would have to put like one here and one there. I mean, I could do that to extend the range. Or I would have to change the layout of this last one so that they don't share a chest to put all the chests down here. So that all the chests are on this side and all the furnaces are up top. and then they wouldn't be able to share chests. Um, <clears throat> but I think, to be honest, I think I would rather just extend the RoboPort range. Um, and then I'm gonna have to update the blueprint for everyone. So if I put a RoboPort here, well, let's try it. If I put one there and I put one there, no, that one's not gonna, That's not going to cover everything. I'm going to have to move. I'm going to have to move these power poles. No, that's too bad. It's almost perfect. And I, I don't want to. I don't want to go too far with this RoboPort because I want to keep. I want to keep. I want to limit the RoboPort range as much as possible. Okay, now, 
yeah, we could just put a power pole there. I think that'll take care of our modules and then, or take care of our beacons. All right, so now, yeah, I can't see the range because I don't have actual roboports there. Okay, so this one covers everything there. All right, turn off the roboports. Put this one there. Okay, yeah, so we're all covered now. All right, so I'm gonna have to revise my blueprint here, obviously. Let's put those back, and then we'll have to do the same thing on this bottom side. So I have the same problem here too. So let's get rid of these power poles. And then we'll just put one there. We'll put one there. And then we'll put a power pole. There. And another power pole. There. Okay, so now I'm gonna have to update my blueprint. Well, I'll just delete that one and I'll have to make a new one. Okay, and I'll get rid of this. I'm just gonna get rid of the curved sections and that way I can use this for whether the rail's coming from the other way or from this way. Now, if rails are coming from the south to the north on this blueprint, then then this, this north-south rail might need to be shifted over a little bit more. All right. Spelting module. And let's put a 6-0. So I know I got 60 furnaces. Instead of a beacon, let's put a uh, train track. Yeah, there we go. That looks good. All right, so we'll update the blueprint book with that one. All right, so now the next repetition of this. Yeah, see what I wanted to do was was share this last row of, of beacons, but it's it's not going to... It's not gonna work that way. That's okay. It's not a not a huge loss. Okay, so now this one can be. We just have to put it. We have to put it far enough away that the RoboPort ranges don't connect. All right. And how far away are we from the track? Yeah, basically just one one space over from the track. I wish I could zoom out more. Let me see if I can do this from map view more easily. <laughs> okay. All right, there we go. Just space it out one more like that. Okay, so let's see. Do I have a RoboPort, an actual physical RoboPort? No, I do not. Let's pick one up. Ghost it. That way I can put a physical RoboPort down here and see what the actual range is. Yeah, we'll put it up here. Okay, so this one ends with this line of power poles. Oh, for crying out loud. We should be able to see the range from a blueprinted RoboPort. It makes it hard to design things otherwise. Yeah, and they're still connected. <clears throat> so we have to move this farther away. That's exactly what I wanted to see. So let's pick that up, 
hypothetically. Pick that up, actually. Okay. Yeah, so I can see it when I am holding the whole blueprint, but not when it's already ghosted. All right, now these two, these two are offset by how much? One, two, two tiles, which is gonna be like one position over since I have rails on here. All right. All right, so it'll have to come down here. And then if I shift this over one, then that should be the right spot. And we can see how the RoboPort ranges are just barely out of range of one another. As long as I have at least one tile in between, we'll be fine. All right, so let's turn the robots back on and let's make sure that we can get the rails in here. It looks like, all right, yep, and it looks like everything fits. Okay, so we're gonna repeat this two more times, and then the outputs, right, I think, I think the best thing to do on the, on the exit side is going to be to just to come down this way. And then we'll loop all the way around the top and then come down this side. If that gets to be a problem, we could, I suppose we could exit like in between each section. Um, we'd have to cross over, we'd have to cross over this rail to get out. And, and I don't think I wanna add more signals here because uh, I need to keep this all as one block for the stacker to work properly. So yeah, so I think I am gonna loop around. We'll loop around the top to get out. All right, so if we see how that looks on the mini map, there's one, two, then there's gonna be three and then four, and the trains will come back out the other side. Um, I do need to add a passenger station as well, which I did not consider. Um, we can just put the, we can put the passenger station here. Okay, so this is going to be smelting, iron, PAX. Or the other option, you know, I can I can put the passenger station right here. Or I could put it in between the second and the third, that way it would be right in the center, but would that be better? No, this will be fine. Alright, so we'll put passenger here. And that way we're not uh, interfering with the stacker. All right, I ran out of stations, so let me go retrieve this one. Uh, I'm gonna shift right click so that hopefully it'll remember the name. No, it didn't. Okay, so what did we say? Smelting dash iron dash PAX. Okay, and then that'll be the naming convention for these other ones. will be smelting dash iron dash in, smelting dash iron dash out, and uh, we'll keep the same name for all of these stations 
and then the trains will just kind of automatically load balance and go to whichever ones are available. All right, well, we're out of time for today. Um, so uh, we'll continue setting this up. Uh, I may do, I may keep setting this up and, and do a time lapse or something. Um, I think we can do that in the next episode. Uh, it'll be it'll be more of the same essentially, so um, you won't miss too much if you don't see that. But I can do a, I can do a time lapse so you can see what's going on. Until then, thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye bye.